Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And the old Squirrel Girl is an absolute joke. I don't think we're going to need to spend very long talking about this because it's painfully obvious from the first 10 seconds of this fight just how terrible uniforms from more than a couple of years ago are. And we're going to go ahead and pop the Tier 3 skill so you guys can see that basically she does about 5 times more damage with the Tier 3 skill than literally anything else. Because the Tier 3 skill was designed in the year of the 2023 whereas everything else was designed you know five plus years ago so as just a standalone uniform for squirrel girl this is a massive massive just almost incalculable upgrade right we're gonna go back into that same stage here just very briefly okay we're, we're not gonna spend the whole time focusing on this comparison but I just like I think this sort of gets lost nowadays when these when these uniforms come out. Uh, it gets lost in the the hubbub about how these uniforms compare to other uniforms, etc. But as you can see here, um, in just in just a brief moment, right, it, it, with just a fraction of a skill, she's able to do more damage than the entire double rotation plus the tier three was able to do. It's like like I said again. It's, it's almost like it's like a hundred times more damage. It's it's insane, right? It's absolutely insane how much higher the damage is. And she is now a, a very good tier three speed villain. Um, to put it into perspective here, she's able to do stage 39 easily with an obelisk. And I'll show you the clip of that now where she crushes it. She's actually faster than Thanos, Squirrel Girl. Uh, Nutty, Nutty Titan is actually faster than the wise Harvester Thanos. Um, and probably one of the best if you are trying to climb World Boss Legend and you're not using, um, you know, characters like Moonstone, characters that are native tier 2. Because let's be honest, a lot of villains in this game are um, expensive, right? A lot of the villains in this game. Oh, just use Doctor Doom. Oh, okay. Let me just go fit it. Let me just go buy Invisible Woman and finish that epic quest. Oh, just use, uh, just use so-and-so. Use Magneto. Use Mephisto, right? All these characters, giga expensive. We've gotten a lot of good, uh, cheaper characters lately, like Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, MODOK, Chasm. Don't get me wrong, um, but there are still a lot of them out there uh, that are very expensive. However, that obviously is not addressing the elephant in the room. That Squirrel Girl is very expensive. She is a token character that you have to purchase real money uh, items in order to get the tokens for. And you could buy the Squirrel's Play chest. Uh, you could buy the one on number two that I've already purchased uh, out of stock there. You could buy that three times. You could buy this one. Um, you can't buy it. Well, you could buy it 10 times to get 30 tokens. Or you could wait and buy it seven times and get the, 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 the 10 tokens from the login event. I don't know if the login event has started yet. Uh, it has. So there you go. They're going to be giving away 10 tokens for free. But this, interv this interview, this uh, review for Squirrel Girl, it really just boils down on those two... Uh, it boils down to those two ideas, right? On the one hand, we have an absolutely amazing, right? Just, just, just fabulous, wonderful rework for a character who desperately needed it. And she also gets a tier three, right? So if you guys look at the old tier three advancement, it looks pretty funny. She throws an acorn, it explodes, and then it rains down more acorns. Um, but like, obviously this character needed a rework badly. So on the one hand, this is an amazing rework. On the other hand, it's too expensive because like we just talked about, uh, we need more cheap villains, but we've gotten them recently, right? And they can go to tier four and Squirrel Girl can't go to tier four. And even when they can't go to tier four, like Green Goblin, um, they're better, right? Because Green Goblin also has a support passive for all villain allies that Squirrel Girl doesn't. And although this is not as good for Thanos, it's better for literally every other villain. Not to mention he has a much better leadership than Squirrel Girl has. Not to mention he probably does more damage than Squirrel Girl does. So it's a really tough review. Overall, I would say this, this uniform is only if you want Squirrel Girl to be stronger. I would not get this uniform if you're looking for a speed villain or a villain in general. Because like I just highlighted, Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus easily fulfill that need. And they're just straight up better than Squirrel Girl is. The only advantage this uniform really provides besides the the FOMO that will be relieved when you buy the uniform and you're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about this uniform becoming like a giga meta over the next 11 months and then regretting not buying it in April, back in April 2023, right? Um, that's the only thing this uniform is going to do for you, which unfortunately it's going to trick some people into buying it. Um, and obviously the animations are really cute, right? So 
You're not going to get any other character in the game that attacks with acorns. I can promise you that right now. Okay, I can see the future of Marvel Future Fight. There will not be another character that ha that summons squirrels that throw infinity stones and then launches acorns from the sky like meteors. Right? This just that's just not going to happen. So if if this kind of stuff is entertaining to you and if this is worth the 20 or 30 dollars that it's that it that it costs to you um then you have to get it right similarly if you want squirrel girl to be very competitive and very strong uh then this uniform is 100 percent a must buy for you however for everybody else i think it's a skip even if you're looking for a support for thanos i think this uniform is a skip and i did the testing uh, and i was surprised squirrel girl's passive for thanos is as good that that's 60 increased damage to boss types it's as good or better than valkyrie's passive for thanos however it's only going to work for pve content so keep that in mind it does not work for pvp content um, because enemies on other teams are not labeled as bosses so this only works it works in a lot of content don't get me wrong it works in world boss legend it works in abx abl um which will never matter because they never like they're never going to be on the same team for that uh, and then it also worked for GBR, right? So I think GBR and World Boss Legend are realistically the only places you're going to use them on. But keep in mind, you can't use them on very many stages, right? You can use them on villain stages for World Boss Legend. You can use them on pure evil stages for World Boss Legend. And then if we ever in the future get power cosmic stages, you can use them on those stages. But otherwise, that's it. Now, the build right now is stage 12 Power of Angry Hulk and a mighty CTP of destruction. I'm going to show you guys a few clips here and I'm going to talk through them. Uh, we're going to fast forward, cut, whatever. Uh, but basically, like I said, she was able to do stage 39 with an obelisk with two minutes left. She gains about a minute when you bump her up to a mighty uh, destruction, which is probably similar for an energy CTP, which is quite nice. So she's probably going to gain about 30 seconds on that uh, with an energy, with a regular energy, and then about a minute. So finishing in only two minutes is very, very strong for a mighty CTP of destruction. Uh, we're going to show her some other content later, but what I also wanted to highlight was uh, ABX. So I tested her yesterday in ABX. I, I, I recorded this footage ahead of time so that I'd be able to do it. Um, her score difference between uh, a proc obelisk and a mighty CTP of destruction was not very different. Um, obviously, it would be higher if I used a CTP of rage, but I genuinely don't think that rage is worthwhile for her because her main competition for ABX is going to be either like a tier four Black Widow or a tier four um, uh, Shadow Shell. If you're talking about human female speed types or even Miss Marvel uh, Shuri and Shuri obviously has the support capabilities or for villains, she's going to be competing with Green Goblin and my Green Goblin with a regular CTP of judgment, not a reforged CTP was able to score almost two million more than she was. I got about 9.4, 9.5 million with Squirrel Girl. I'd say like 9.6, 9.7 top end. Uh, so not even 10 million. Uh, my Green Goblin scored over 11 million with um, with a regular CTP of Judgment. So he's, he's going to score even higher if I was able to um, reforge that. He does have some Odin's Blessings, let's be fair. But he's also just a better character, right? He has a support passive. She doesn't. Um, and he is more well built for this game mode. So as far as the meta goes for Squirrel Girl, she's already been beaten. She's already been beaten to the punch. And this is what kind of doesn't make sense, in my opinion, about these uniforms. I mean, I guess it's sort of the devs way of saying that they're not trying. They're not like completely milking the player base, right? If they didn't release Green Goblin and they did release Squirrel Girl, then this would be a completely different conversation. This conversation would be, hey guys, they just dropped the best speed villain um, for, you know, ABX, ABL. You need to get this character. Like this is this is a meta shift, right? And then if they release Green Goblin in a few months, it would be like, okay, now we have a free-to-play alternative. But they gave us the free-to-play alternative a month ago, less than a month ago. So it's already here. So you, just, you can just skip it. So from a meta perspective, it's completely skippable. Now, anyways... With that being said, I've sort of highlighted why you would buy this uniform, why you wouldn't buy this uniform. Let's go and smash it here. Stage 44 is going to get absolutely blitzed. We are going to use Green Goblin lead. Haha, ha, I know. For those of you wondering why I didn't use an energy CTP or mighty energy, Squirrel Girl doesn't have invincibility on her main kit. Uh, she has it on her tier 3, but not on the main kit, which is uh, a disappointment. 
and does make it a little bit frustrating to play her at times versus bosses that guard break a lot. Uh, you'll see it especially versus um, Null, but uh, it also happens versus other bosses. Now, her rotation when you don't have the tier 3 up is very proc friendly and very easy. It's just 5 cancel, 4 cancel, 1 cancel, 2 cancel, 3. You just cancel everything into 3. It's very easy to remember. Um, and it's, oh, we're done. Sweet, sweet. Uh, it's very easy to remember and it's also very, uh, you know, consistent. However, when you pop the tier 3, you have to delay cancel until she throws the little orb, just like Thanos throws the orb. Um, so that can trigger the next proc. And also, there are some lingering hits on the third on the tier three skill there are some lingering hits uh, and that can trigger your next proc as well so i can't actually give her that that stellar of a rating for uh, proc friendliness because of those two issues now there our proc was just giga delayed uh what it does do though is it shows us how tanky she is that whole time that i was talking to you i just basically ignored all of mephisto's um you know animations and things and attacks and it didn't matter their uh taskmaster got shredded but that's okay taskmaster we don't need him we need him for the support that's all we need him for but yeah so before the tier 3 10 out of 10 proc friendliness during the tier 3 it's like a 7 out of 10 it's honestly not that good and you can definitely miss the proc and in the clips that i showed you guys for her abx uh rotations there we go we just we just procced by accident uh the next rotation with some lingering hits from the tier three, which is, yeah, just an unfortunate uh, design flaw, I guess, of the tier three. There's just too many lingering hits. However, as you can see here, the damage is uh, is quite nutty. Get it? Get it, guys? Nutty? Ha oh. ha. Yeah, we're popping off, dude. We're flying. We are flying. And I think I did this one faster on, uh, on a test run that I was doing. Um, I don't know if this is a good idea. Oh, it's actually not bad. Oh, it's actually not bad at all. Okay. We're just going to finish him off here. But yeah, super fast, super strong, tanky. Like, as a standalone character, she is very good. She's very good. She's fun to play. And like I said, you're not going to find a character who, um, you know, who throws nuts anywhere else. Just a quick little showcase. Uh, unfortunately, this is like kind of tier four only territory which although she has the um, ability for it, it just doesn't doesn't really work, right? Even with a mighty CTP, as you can see here, she gets made just less than a bar worth of damage. We can try it. I can, I can play, play it out a little longer here. Uh, sometimes I do one cancel too, sometimes I don't. It doesn't matter that much. It just matters for the first rotation, so you build up the tier three. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see here. We didn't miss any of our procs, so this is kind of like a best case scenario for the damage. And he interrupts my uh, tier 3 skill to iframe for one of his animations. Okay. Yeah, so 30 seconds in, uh, you know, two bars of damage. There's just no way. Yeah, this is this is just not happening in, in any way, shape, or form. So, so, yeah. Unfortunately, although she has the tag, she's really she would really only be here to buff up your Thanos. But again, I think Thanos at level 80 will probably be able to probably be able to do this. Maybe not. Um, at tier four, he'll definitely be able to do this. There are multiple stages where Thanos is useful and needed for Ultron. You, again, you can use him here on 55 if you don't have Carnage. And then again, I believe on 80 uh, versus Ultron. But again, you're probably going to need him tier four for that. Um, but yeah, you don't use Squirrel Girl in that sense. And he can probably do it without her. So yeah, unfortunately, this uniform just... There's no need... It's, it's not unfortunate. It's, it's not like I... I don't know. Like... It, it's it's such a weird review it's such a weird review it's a paid uniform but it has no obvious need but it's good i guess this is the best case scenario i don't know uh it's weird because free to play and low spending players will look at this uniform and be angry at two completely opposite things they'll be angry that it's that it costs money of course that one's obvious but then they'll also be angry that it's not that strong which kind of goes against the whole principle of like pay to win right like if this uniform was really op then it would be more pay to win so it's it's you know on one hand it's good that it's not more op because then it's then it's not pay to win but on the other hand then it's a skip and it's just boring because then you could just ignore it so i i don't really know yeah but that's that's honestly the review and uh you know for those of you wondering she basically has zero pvp value no iframe ignore nothing 
Nowadays, I think iframe ignore is by default needed. Uh, if not an iframe ignore with a counter skill is needed for any kind of PVP viability, um, even for something like Alliance Conquest. So I don't I don't see her having much value at all. Um, I mean, she'll have some value, but like very, very low on the scale considering, you know, no invincibility, no super armor by default, and then uh, no penetration either, which is crazy. Um, and then also uh, no, no actual PVP abilities, right? So yeah, she has incapacitation, that's it. So that's, that's the review for Squirrel Girl, a very nutty character indeed. Thanks so much for watching, smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.